with the blonde hair. <laughs> that's that's yeah. funny. Hey, how's it going, Jay? Hey, what's I told up? You the shovels. I told you guys you didn't believe me. He just woke up. <laughs> no, I've been screwing with the freaking website all morning and yesterday, all day yesterday. You know, every time uh, we actually, I mean, this is the honest truth. Every time that we put the Matrix word in the title, it seems like whoever comes on or during the show, networks just, it just acts weird. It just like shuts people off, kicks you out, brings you back in. It's kind of a weird because, you know, you and I kind of, we talk a little bit in Instagram about Matrix. Maybe, maybe you uh, jinxed yourself with the word Matrix. Or uh, WordPress has jinxed everybody. I mean, it was actually a thing where they did an update and everybody uses the WordPress, uh, you know, open software. Like it screwed everybody's stuff up. So I don't know if they're intentionally kind of trying to sabotage stuff. Whoa. <laughs> where the hell I, you get that at? <laughs> uh, I feel about, like Jimmy Stewart. I'm, I'm seeing Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, the matrix is doing weird things. Hey, uh, uh, Jay, we're actually uh, we're showing people uh, your your website and all that. And because uh, yesterday during our show, uh, I was uh, uh, saying that you're coming on a Wednesday, and somebody in the chat goes, "Dude, I just bought Jay's book." Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like, "Wow, that's freaking cool!" And the guy's like, "You got him coming on?" I go, "How weird is that? I just bought his book, and here you are having Jay on." How's that weird? <laughs> That's kind of insulting. No, 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 no. There's one guy out there that bought the book. Not weird. Not weird that somebody bought his book. They just okay. bought his book. And yeah. I can now say who's coming on. So it was kind of like it, it just happened at the same time where somebody well, was excited and then you just buy a book and then here you are, a guy who watch our show, every show, we having him on. So it's like, Synchronicity, yeah. they're like, it's synchronicity. Oh, the yeah. esoteric yeah. Hollywood is what I'm going to read because gotcha. that's a lot of deep Hollywood. you got a lot of cool Hollywood stuff, man. Uh, a Thank lot you. of people see it, but they don't get it. But you sit there like, and you take the notes down. Don't you guys see the symbolisms behind this? And then that, and there's the, the color schemes for this scene. And it's like, there's, it's right in your face. <laughs> you know, you got to be able to see it. <laughs> And you guys, uh, I did check out a couple of your podcasts. You guys cover like horror, science fiction, right? Yeah. Oh, we cover everything. I mean, we, we cover uh, basically our channel. We, we talk to people from the Bigfoot community, the UFO community. Uh, we talk to people about <laughs> Medell effects. I mean, there's nothing that's been off subject. And then, of course, on Tuesday and Thursdays, we do do a show called Horror Talk where we pick a horror talk. We, we pick a movie, a horror movie. And we just yeah. dissect the whole movie for a whole hour, so yeah, we so there's nothing that's ever been off topic, and one of the reasons why I've always been attracted to your channel because in a lot of ways you're oh look he just lost his audio he has you, no idea that his audio is off channel oh cool no you, you your channel you talk about everything too everything you too. Have, you and I both monetize for monetize. The truth out there truth out there. Yeah, I do hear background. Totally, dude. Because when these things, when especially when you got a high high roller, right? <laughs> you're gonna have the CIA messing with all the equipment that, or whatever powers it be, you're gonna mess with everything. Guaranteed, right. one of us is kicked right. out of here. We can need to put a dollar down for the first person kicked off. Here we go. Can we can we say uh, 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 nasty words and all that here or not? We swear. I swear. I have a threat. We are not a church. Are not a church. Okay. No, I was in the Navy and I have threats. So on top of it, so I was a perfect match when I went in the Navy. I could speak freely. No one gotcha. gotcha. So uh, since you were, since you made a joke about uh, my book, can I make a joke about your uh, retardus there? That's not a TARDIS. That's a retardus. It's a retardus. Yeah. Yeah. It's a time traveling machine. Hold on one second. I hear a lot of let me see where the echo coming from. Hold on a second. Bob, I'm going to put you out. Let me see. Nope, I don't hear the echo. Is that better? Oh. See. Bob, is, it mine? is it testing Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, me? Is it me going one to the highest soul to the highest bidder? I hear it when I talk. I hear it when I talk. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I knew it, man. Hold on, Jay. I'm just going uh, to see if it's coming from you for a second. Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
No, Bob, it's actually from you. Okay. I'm going to take you out and just rejoin like last time. I'm not. Okay. There we go. And he, he could just rejoin. No, Jay, uh, like I said, uh, first of all, congratulations to you for uh, getting over 60,000 subs over the weekend. That's that's pretty awesome. Um, in, in, in the same way where uh, I got over 6,000 over the weekend at the same time, so we got that six number. <laughs> the same. You just have the extra zero. <laughs> well, actually, I feel like the toughest was the, uh, the like, hitting 10 and then 20, 30. That was the hardest. Seemed like it, the growth is a little quicker, even with maybe the uh, algorithm not being that fair. You're not getting as much, you know, algorithmic promotion as you used to get uh, covering the, the type of stuff that we cover. But I do feel like, you know, the hardest hurdles w were 5, 10, 20, 30,000. So once you guys get up to that, it, it'll go a little smoother. But congrats on you guys, too. <laughs> no, I, I was uh, one, of, one of your streaming service. One of your streaming service. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about money. one of your uh, videos. You were talking to a person who was explaining that, that he noticed that somehow YouTube was unsubscribing people. And I know what he's talking about because we've all seen the same thing too, where yeah. I had people coming in say, Eric, I didn't get your notification because, because I found out that I was unsub from you and they had a resub. And then was listening to your video where the guy says he, he even called YouTube and they even, even said that, no, we don't unsub anybody, but it, it, it does happen. And what I understand, what I read, uh, what I understand about the computer system, Maybe I'm off. Maybe this is a conspiracy theory. I don't know. But but what I've understood and learned that YouTube computer system, if it sees that you're getting too many subs real quick, it thinks you're cheating. Uh, and it will, yeah. it will automatically, like oh, yeah. for 20 that you get, say you get 20 in a day, it will take three, four, five people off to say, thinking that you're cheating somehow. And I'm like, well, how am I cheating? I mean, first of all, and then the four to five people that take off, how does it choose those four to five people? Is it the new 20? Or why is it the older people that are watching you are the four and five? I mean, that's what I've read, what I've been seeing. I mean, gotcha. is that what you heard, Jay, by any chance? That no, I, I didn't know that at all. So that's new to me, but it makes sense. Yeah, no, it's fake because I had, I had, when I was on 666 <laughs> subs, it locked for two weeks. And I got hate mail, and I kept getting, and then people, I was calling people, unsub me now, dude. And they unsub me, and then nothing. And it was on 666. And I'm like, what, are they trying to single me out as a bad person? Because, <laughs> And then I was I stuck so. on 999. I was stuck on, like, right now I'm on stuck. I'm stuck at 1,000, one, oh, six, five years doing it, 1,201, 13. So I'm stuck at 13 if you want to do the math on it. And it's been that way for uh, months. So nobody could sub. Eric puts my thing in there for an experiment. I went to school for anthropology. I'm doing stats like, okay, sub me now. Anybody? Nobody. Nothing. <laughs> it's, just, ah, it's some kind of algorithm play, play toy. Who knows? Yeah, I think uh, Tr Tristan has been having that problem, my buddy, over at Primal Edge Health. Like once he got up to one – uh, 30, 130,000. He's basically been frozen there for months and months and months. And, uh, he, it's not that he's not putting out, you know, the, the, the similar content or people don't like his channel anymore. It's just something happened to where now it just does not grow. So no. there's probably governors and throttlers, you know, in place. Somebody in the yeah. chat put in a, a link to his book. There it is. Jay Dyer's book on amazon.com. Yes. Historic. Well, can, I, can I recommend to uh, get the book, not from Amazon, <laughs> but to get it from my website. There's a shop in the website. So, cause Amazon screws over authors. So. Okay. I will put that right now in the chat. Cool beans. Appreciate yeah. that. There and uh, there's a JavaScript error with the new WordPress update. That's what I was screwing with all day. It's messing up new purchases and new subscriptions. So in order to purchase it, you have to purchase it with PayPal. So that's the only way that you'll be able to get it from the shop right now. No problem. Yeah. I don't think uh, Elon Musk owns it anymore. So you guys feel good about that. It's okay. Use PayPal. He's, he's dealing with a car right now. He's got a car in space. Don't worry about that. He's dealing with a car. I think he's got a couple of rockets. He's not got, I mean, some, he's got the CGI crew working their ass off with that stuff. He's, so he's like guys. Matthew McConaughey. He likes to drive yeah. some Teslas up into space, just like a Lincoln can go into space. All right, all right, all right. 
<laughs> I apologize. I, I won't. I'm not gonna screw with you guys. Show no, man. Go for it, dude. Go for no, it. No. Hey, we have fun here right now. You're part of it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we have fun here. Good, Holy. By the way, let me tweet this out since we're we're going live. Like, we'll try to get some more. I mean, I'm not I'm not insulting you guys. Like, uh, <laughs> you need some more people in here. Uh, let me use my e celeb status and bring them in. Okay, this sounds good. <laughs> I'm just not that shitty of a person. I'm sure many people think I am, but I'm not that shitty of a person. No, man, you got a stubble, dude. Uh, you probably got that That's 80s true. stubble uh, device from uh, uh, Crockett in the 80s. Did you buy that? You I buy have uh, basically modeled my whole style on Crockett. You're right. Um, very good, very good. I don't very even good. know why. I, th I think somebody asked me the other day, like, what, were the la what was the last Halloween costume you wore? Uh, and I was like, I think 10 years ago I was uh, Sonny Crockett. And they were like... <laughs> Maybe that could be your whole aesthetic, and I was like, "That's sure, right, let's do it." <laughs> do you do you have a, a alligator? Do you have an alligator on chains in your in your boathouse? Is that where you have the alligator in the front part? <laughs> uh, is that a code for something sexual? Alligator? No, no, he's rocking out an alligator. He had, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was, he sounds had like an alligator that. chained to the front of his it boat. I was like, like "Why is this in the movie? Why is this in the show?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Miami Vice, yeah, they go to his boat and he's actually feeding his alligator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. And then he, he smoked his uh, uh, Lucky Strikes and then they got mad about him smoking Lucky. You know what's funny about that series? My dad was reading, a, a, it was a Shotgun News, no jokes, serious stuff, uh, Shotgun News, and there were guys hanging around the set, hanging around the set of Miami Vice because for some reason, the, 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 the uh, whatever people didn't pick up the clips to his Beretta. And so when he was a shooting in the streets, he drops this clip and loads it, and they continue with the show, and they move the set over, and they don't pick up – they didn't pick up the, the magazines. And so these guys were waiting around in the fringes for the magazines. I go, what? And this was in literature, literature. I was like, no way. These are rare, hard-to-find magazines. I'm like, I had something wrong with this story well, there's a certain there's a certain dude i won't name him but he used to be a writer for the show and he just uh, he decided that i was uh, sh an illuminati shill uh maybe five years ago and he would write Good. constant he really was a writer or producer for mommy vice many many years obviously many years ago uh, and so he he decided i was illuminati shill and so he wrote all these essays to prove it and his central proof was that uh, there's a Jay Dyer on IMDb who is a producer of black comedies and sitcoms. So this was like in the nineties. So I would have been 18 years old in high school, right? Producing black sitcoms and comedies. And then turns out the actual Jay Dyer is a black dude. So okay. that's not me. I can see but. the similarity a little bit, you know. That's my that's my uh, connection to Miami Vice. Is this, this your, your life matters though. That's all that matters. Your life matters. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, th people call me CIA. I don't know. We make a great team on the show then. So you're chill and I'm CIA. Eric, I don't know what you are. Think you uh librarian? You work in a library? You're C I A Z Z because you look like yeah. ZZ top, bro. For yes, real. thank you. Thank you very little. I appreciate that. <laughs> Took a long time for this. You could easily be uh like an Orthodox monk or in ZZ Top. Which would you choose? I do, I can get into churches. I'm in England, so I get into churches easy. I get by people with because they don't grow hair on their face here. For right. some reason, they're afraid of, I don't know, they like razors. So I can get about, I can get around anywhere like this. They think I'm a slayer. I get 50% off at some of the stores because they are the restaurants because they think I'm with the BBC. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm there's a, a musician. Of, with the BBC. There's a lot of soy in England. England. England's pretty soyified. Yeah, there's soy boys here. Yeah, yeah. they got skinny jeans, skinny jeans. Chat life matters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's got I'm legs. He knows how to use them. I've seen a whole lot of skinny jeans and no socks. I'm like, I'm confused by that, man. There's a gap between, I mean, <laughs> Darjean Limited. I mean, is he, are the director hanging around here somewhere? I forget his oh, name. You, so when you go to England, you hear, mind the gap, mind the gap. And you're saying, you're talking about, you're talking about the thigh gap of the skinny, the guys, the boys. Yes. The yeah. There is, there is a thigh gap That's here. But, gap for men, for men, but for men have a thigh gap here. So men have a thigh gap and the skinny jeans. And that's Sometimes. why this. That's why it's up. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. <laughs> By the way, does the whole city still smell like grandma soap? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, like they've taken a uh, rose, like a rose kind of a spray, and they spray things. It's everything smells so fresh. Yeah, it's very fresh smelling here. Like I couldn't understand where that smell was coming from the first time I went there a couple years ago. I was like, why does this whole city smell like my grandma's house? It's the doilies. It's the doilies. 
Hey, Senator Doyle is here. And then, you know, there's... Is, you that, know, one the street, is that one of the street gangs? <laughs> That's the soy yeah, boy street yeah, gang. Yeah, the Doyle is here. They, they... Oi, where are the Doyle's? <laughs> <laughs> you F, you got to fuck with us, mate. You're fucking you with the wrong crew. <laughs> yeah, the we're street t- gangs... We're are... tickle your ass. <laughs> <laughs> they have their own tea. They have their own... The gangs here have their own tea. So when you stop, like in America, they would put down cardboard and break dance. But over here, they put down cardboard and they put doilies down. They have tea parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a weird British version of West Side Story. <laughs> it is. It is. Well, without the dancing. And then they have male thigh gaps. So it's, uh, you know, it's up to you how you want to think about this place. Oh, no offense, yeah. England. We're playing. We're Americans. I haven't had anybody to joke with for a long time. It has a great sense of humor. So oh, I mean, we're playing. We like you, England. You live in England. So, you know, they should be accepting you. Yeah, I, I got a beard, so it's easy. Again, I can walk into churches. I just take the hat off and just nominate Padre Fili Spiris to Sante. Come on inside. And they give me money sometimes. Pay your ties. But Bob, has anybody ever mistake you for ZZ Top by any chance? Yes. Hey, yes. I'm not joking Top. by that. Yes. Uh, I was even in Amsterdam, and a guy stops in a truck. He slams his brakes in a truck, and he goes ZZ Top. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. You say you easily, want to be <laughs> easily, easily over here. It's like nobody grows a beard. This is like medieval land. I mean, Dumbledore's right up the road with freaking Hogwarts and nobody grows a beard. You'd think, I mean, he's not gay though. That was a rumor, but here's his wand. You guys decide for yourself if Dumbledore has any way had any gay tendencies, but this is his wand. I have it. I don't know what you guys want to think of that wand. That's a soy he's wand. Right there. <laughs> I have a wand chart here too, guys. If you want a wand chart, if, if if you think it is what it's spo- it is, why do you have it? I was curious. I was wand curious, so I was wand curious. I got the, I got a wand chart, so I wanted to get Are Dumbledore you? to see if he was actually gay. There's a rumor that he's gay in the books. I said no. Dumbledore was never gay in my timeline, so I wanted to see his wand for myself. Are you There's in? Uh, of- Are you in? Ra- Are you in Ravenclaw? Are you in Hufflepuff? Poof, get it? I'm Hufflepuff. I'm Hufflepuff. Yes. You're a Hufflepoofter. I'm a Hufflepoof. Yes, because uh, I like marijuana, and they actually have it here. But and the other, the other reference to the word Hufflepuff, <laughs> <laughs> not Raven's Claw, not Hufflepoof. That's uh, Australia for happy, know, ha- very, happy men. <laughs> very happy men. Very happy men. Oh, I want to ask a question, Jay. I was showing everybody um, your web page your YouTube page and I'll show everybody how different topics that you have on your channel. And one of the, uh, one of the topics here and I'll admit, I haven't watched yet. I should have, it caught my eye was this one right here. This is the top 10 ways the world ends with Jay Dyer roasted. Now I'll be honest. I didn't get to watch that, but I do want to watch it now. Now, did you get roasted on it or, what is I this- did was I put on Twitter, I wanted everybody to do the best roast. And I'm sad to say that uh, pretty much most of my audience failed. They didn't have very good roasts. They tried. I'll give them some. Uh, there was a couple discount Andrew McCarthy. You, I, I mean, there weren't, they were, they were kind of weak though. I had, I had to kind of castigate my crew for not, uh, not properly roasting me. So it, it was just a completely retarded stream. The whole thing is just nothing but nonsense. That's fun, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> if, if this, this my, people in our chat, they'll roast up. I'm nice. sure they could roast better than we yeah. roast. Yeah, we roast. The nerds here. failed, right? The, 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 <laughs> they failed big time. It depends on what I your religion them, is. I could roast me better than them. So <laughs> that's why I grew the beard. It's easier. I, I make it easier for people. There's a hundred things you can say, man. You've already hit like a couple of top ones. It's like, second. well, yeah, the obvious ones. Easy to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like your videos because they're a blend of everything. Again, you got a great sense of humor, so Thanks, everything's dude. comfortable. I people are serious, man, and I can't take it. I can't take them bitching at me on the. I, I feel a like they're of, talking to me personally. You know, Ugh. A, a, a lot of people get mad that I joke around a lot, and I'm just like, I mean, does everybody have autism now? Like, what? Isn't that a, a well-developed human being as somebody who, you know, can utilize wit and humor and so forth? And granted, yes, my style of humor is not for everybody. It's, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to call it. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's cringy at times and it's, uh, you know, it's wacky, it's silly, yeah. but uh, that's me. So, you know. 
yeah, yeah. You yeah. Have a lot of truth in it. You know, one of the uh, your last video, the 60k one, when I was watching it, one of the things that impressed me about yourself, you know, when you're talking about you're talking about one of the most famous directors of all time, Martin uh, Scorsese. Okay. Oh, yes. Scorsese. About Martin Scorsese, and what impressed me was, I mean, we all know Goodfellas is a rare, fantastic movie. You know, we don't have to even talk about Goodfellas. You said it on your own channel, but you're you're talking about like Martin Scorsese. You know, you were impressed with every single movie. You watched it later in life. You got some more things out of it. And I kind of feel the same way where everybody puts Mark Scorsese. I and mean, he is one of the greatest directors of all time. Don't get me wrong. But they put him on the mountain. Like everything he does is, is like you should like, you know, down. You know, his last movie he made for Netflix was called The Irishman. Okay. Right. It was the most expensive movie ever made for Netflix. They put like $200 million in this movie. And, you know, because they did a lot of de-aging. Okay. <laughs> So, so oh. I wanted to see it. I was excited to see it, and I watched it. And I got to be honest, the movie bored the hell out of me. It, it, it was all right. It wasn't, you know, one of the scenes that totally got me out of the whole movie was something that I don't understand why Martin Scorsese didn't, with all the money he had for this movie, why didn't he use a stunt double? What I mean is, there's a scene with Robert De Niro fighting this guy out of a cafe. They, 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 they go through a window. He's kicking them on the street, on the sidewalk. But it looks so bad. I mean, like, like he, he's, he, he's an old guy. He's old. old. They're kicking him like he was an old guy. But they, they generalize his face to look younger. I'm like, that scene, they should have used a stunt double to really look like you're kicking the guy. Because it just, it just took me out of the whole movie. It's like, it didn't look right. I'm like, with all this money you you put in this movie, that one scene, kicking the shit out of somebody did not look right. If you're going to kick the shit out of somebody, please make it look real. Now, I was might Joe Pesci in it? Was Joe Pesci in it? Yes, he was in it. He Joe was Pesci in it. Was in it. Yes, Al Pacino, they were all in it. But Okay, okay. I, I don't know what Jay thinks. Of, like, I don't know what Jay thinks of the Irishman, but I had to come out and say, I thought it was overrated. Uh, that seems to be the consensus. I have to, I, are you using like the Latin pronunciation <laughs> of this name? Or is, uh, is he, this an inside deaf. joke? Eric's, deaf. Eric's got deaf. He's got I, hearing impairment. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't, now I feel like a piece of shit. But, uh, no, don't. No, I, make fun of <laughs> I, I didn't mean to be rude. Um, so no. I did not. I, everybody said the Irishman was uh, pretty boring. And I'm not a huge. I mean, I like, I guess, some of the classic ones. The only reason I really brought up Scorsese was just because I had been reviewing mafia films and I watched Casino and uh, Gangs of New York. But, I mean, there's a lot of, like, you know, no, canon, you know, part of the Scorsese canon that, that I'd never seen. Like, I think, I think the last one I'd watched was probably Wolf of Wall Street. So I missed a lot of these, you know, supposed... Uh, classics from scorsese i did like hugo i thought that was all right uh and then i liked shutter island i thought that was pretty good oh yeah but uh, I, I covered aviator i mean i had a whole chapter in esther hollywood one on uh, aviator so I, i've given some props to scorsese but uh, really it's not until i reviewed uh what was it i went back and watched oh shit now i can't find it that Nick Cage ambulance movie. I cannot yeah. remember the name of it. Oh, yes, bring out the dead. Bring out the dead. Yes, I, I, I'd never yeah. seen that. And I went and watched it. I was like, dang, this was actually really good. So yeah, I was, was impressed with it. Ones. It's one of those yeah. rare ones that you didn't even know it existed. And when you watch it, like, damn, this is actually good. Yeah, that was his nephew, Nicholas Cage. Um, yeah, uh, Uncle bails him out of a lot of movies. No, no, a lot of a nephew, of that's Copeland. That's Francis Ford Copeland. Oh, Copeland. They all sound the same to me. White people are always the same to me. I'm a I'm a ginger, so we're separate. I got red. I got red going on in here. So I see that. I see that you have a hint of ginger in you. Don't grow that out. You'll be made fun of. You know that. Uh, well, yeah. when I did grow it out, it was super red. But that was back in my twenties, <laughs> so I, I, yeah. it's, it's got a lot more white in it now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I was uh, uh, thinking about. Also, when I, people forget that Martin Scorsese did a really great satire in the '80s called After Hours. Have you seen it? I think I have. Who's the actors in this? Was oh, was it's it? a, I forget that it's an eighty. Uh, uh, Don. Um, 
Somebody. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going to pull it up at IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to see it. Yeah, I have to see it because I have a memory problem. Uh, but, drugs in the '80s really took me out. It's really, so. it, it's, <clears throat> it's really, it's, it's very, it's similar in a lot of ways to the ambulance movie, Bringing Out the Dead, but it's more of a of a dark satire comedy. Um, what's the guy's name? Something done. Do you any? Well, uh, Bringing Out the Dead was good though. It was like he's having a psychological. <laughs> there we go. All the junkies. That's a great satire of yeah, of like like. World Gen Arquette. Basically, it's just the, the guy has the worst night ever, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. It, it's really good, though. Uh, yeah, great recommend. movie. If you're getting a little bit loaded watching it, you feel him. You Like, this job sucks, man. He hates oh, it. He, I've seen this before. Boy. Man, I've seen this in the 80s and never seen it again. So, Oh, my God. Yeah, he thinks he's going to just go out and have a fun night and, you know, try to – meet a chick and and then the night just gets worse and worse and and he meets crazier and crazier people as the night goes on that's a great susan desperately seeking susan girls in it right uh, it does girls have, girls. yes it does have kim control you're right or, excuse yeah, me, yeah, yeah, Roseanne yeah. Arquette, excuse me yeah i always thought she was a lesbian with madonna when i, I was a kid fantasy griffin fan. dunn. i told you don i couldn't think of griffin dunn but yeah griffin dunn is in it yeah. yeah, Don Roseanne Arquette. The yeah. Chong, Tom, uh, Cheech and Chong show up too. They're pretty funny. Oh uh, yeah, God, I mean, it's just, I'm gonna have to rewatch it just to. God, yeah, one. Yeah, I've been going back to the old '80s stuff, man. I mean, I'm I'm gonna knock. I'm gonna watch um, Flesh Gordon pretty soon. I'm thinking about watching that one. It's another classic. It's a lot of class. Bring the kids. Bring the fam. It's a family movie. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying Flash it's Gordon? It's a joke, people. I'm being sarcastic. It is not a family movie. Flash Gordon is a X-rated movie versus Flash Gordon. It's yeah, it's yeah, really about? bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, Jay will probably write that down secretly. He's writing it down. Flash Gordon. I've got to see this to make a show. It's got to be symbols in this. A lot of, a lot of uh, Freudian. Well, you know, in, in the normal uh, uh, Flash Gordon, that. There's Masonic symbolism, all seeing eye everywhere yeah. in the regular Flash Gordon. Yeah, are you talking about the one with Queen? The Queen played the uh, the intro no. song for it? Yeah. God, the yeah, the 1980s. Yeah. yeah, one of my favorite. I love it. I love that movie. I loved it. Oh man, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. the the e The evil empire. Their symbol is like the the square and compass. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it is the yeah. square and compass. It's the same thing as Star Trek. Star Trek has the same little. Well, they have the the well the square the compass you know right this square below it but yeah it's the same it's like in fact space force now has that if you look at space force now they have yeah. star trek symbol i'm like oh. this is like straight up square and compass so let me show you let's see let's take a look hmm. what's the some... name do you remember the name of the bad guys whatever they're called uh bill i'll just put villain let's see andromelins It may not show me a picture of it, but yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah, Look I mean, at it. Well, there you go. It's this. It's the square and compass on his. It's, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's got it right here too. Got it right yeah. in the screen. Right there. Yeah, yeah she's got yeah. it too, and hers, the chick. Of course, it's the uh, welcome. Welcome to the Freemasonry. Come inside. Come into yeah. the temple. Stand next to Boaz and Joaquin. She's got three. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's and, uh and her crown. They, look at her crown too. Oh yeah. What do they call those? Something day? Oh, not Opus Day, but I know uh what, what they call them women. I can't remember. There's a female Freemasonry thing that's in this place. I have no idea. I mean, there's a bigger picture right here. Oh yeah, he's awesome. There he is. Uh, uh Rainbow. R Rainbow girls and the uh, uh, daughters. Like Daughters of Job or some shit. Yeah, yeah, Job's daughters. Job's daughters. I knew a Job's daughter. She lived in a trailer with cats, man. They're not doing much for her on the Freemasonry scale. I'm telling you right now. I don't know what's that about. A lot of people don't really get much out of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> well, I worked at the Museum of Flight for years, and they're all Freemasons, all of them. I was told I can't really move up unless um, I 
join the Freemasonry. And so I'm like, well, I don't like you guys. I'm not a fraternity guy. I was in the military. I don't need to fucking do it all over again. But I joined for a short time. And uh, yeah, I got a job. I got a promotion. I was like, wow, this is not nepotism at all. No, I don't really think you get much advantage from it really until you're up in like the 33rd degree when yeah. you get invited to dc and all that that seems to be the only people who like really get any advantage out of it because i've met people that were 32nd degree and they don't know anything you know anything yeah look somebody you know, has had his starting yesterday <laughs> <laughs> you watched it yesterday sink yeah you don't get much with those guys i they were just uh, they were actors they just do acting acting they act they have all these little skits they read out and i'm like oh cool man this is nice it's like dungeons and dragons like i was a kid <laughs> it's just like larping it's like the older <laughs> version of DD, exactly well they were every one of them i was in there going because i played dm dungeons and dragons when i was a kid and this is what you guys are doing you guys are larping yeah people don't know what larping is you didn't go to college uh anyway the, you, you'd, you'd be you'd be walking to your next class kind of semi late and you got to walk through a crowd of people with large foam sticks and they're beating the shit out of each other you got to get around them because they're LARPing. They're they're LARPing each other with, and you're late for class. And so you got to tell the teacher they were LARPing in front of the building. I was late. That's what yeah, they are. You they you've been to Europe or you're in Europe, so I guess you you yeah. know of the fact that like that that eventually caught on. No, that, that that's like a cool thing now because I when I was in doing my uh, undergrad, I remember I, there was this German exchange student who was in my class. I was trying to hit on her, and uh, right. and I was like. L uh, literally and i was like you know let's let's go do this she's like are you into the role plank and i was like you mean like <laughs> like the bedroom stuff no in the park <laughs> <And I'm> like <laughs> what because she, she was you know attractive blonde tall uh german probably braless, right because he's european who what she's probably braless because she was european growless like growless she didn't have a bra oh i don't recall but yeah, she's brawless. Yeah, yeah. Most Europeans are brawless when they're in the states. Uh, well, the I irony was European. that the yeah. irony was that that the uh, she she was like really wanting to to go do this crap, and like you realize that here, this is like total dorks, right? This is like the nerdy. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, no, over in Germany, it's the coolest thing. Only the cool people do this, and I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so it was the reverse. Wow. Yeah, I can. It was see like my that whole town. Here. Everyone in the town does this. <laughs> yeah, they can see him LARPing over here. I oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna walk right past that too. I'm gonna walk right. Well, I don't know. I might pretend I'm old now. It, it might be cool. We have to reverse ourselves. You know, I'm gonna get a pair of skinny jeans, probably coming up pretty soon. Let my gut hang over with some beers and then do some LARPing. How do you you guys into that? You guys want to do well, some skinny jeans? And LARP? A lot of stuff that starts out as nerd culture, geek culture. <laughs> you know, it eventually becomes like mainstream. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bill Gates became cool. I mean, how'd that happen, right? That's fucked up. Really? Yeah. Elon Musk. Look at like, again. We make fun of Elon. How how that happened? I mean, there's a fucking nerd on top of the nerd pile right there. Now he's multi millionaire with the United States government funding, and we're paying him. We're paying him to be his way. I'm like, we have. He probably has a probably has a Matrix jacket in his closet. And he probably quotes lines in a mirror by himself. Man, this is not good. We're giving him millions of dollars. It's fucked up. We actually have a, a a question from the chat. Kind of a cool, cool kind of a cool question. Can you ask Jay for his top moves? Or he must make movies. Top movie that predicted our current situation. The Macarena, the Roger Rabbit. Uh, those are all the top <laughs> moves. That, um, what's the Soldier Boy? The Superman? That hoe. That's the one that predicted where we are now. Soldier Boy. Nobody knows that rap song from like ten years ago. Um, Hollywood. Let's see. What predicted? Well, I I have a whole chapter in my book. Well, both books on like what predicted where we are. So I listed Matrix, obviously Tron, Running Man, Terminator, Her, Ex Machina, Westworld, Cherry Two Thousand, Metropolis. Uh, for future predictions, and then I have a section on like weather, engineering, control, Dune. Snowpiercer, uh, and I included even some weird ones for cults and mind control, like They Live, uh, American Ultra, The Cell, Clockwork Orange, obviously Conspiracy Theory with Mel Gibson for all the mind control stuff. I mean, there's a million different, you know, mind control. Oh, there is, there is. Type movies, uh, V for Vendetta. You know, I got all of those in here. So, 
those are some of the ones I put. Um, and then there's other. That's just in part two, but there's other ones in part one. But uh, what do you guys think? I'll, I'll shoot one. I'll shoot one. I, I guarantee okay. most nobody in the chat seen this movie. It's actually on Shutter. It's called Mayhem. It came out Mayhem. in 2017. Okay, Mayhem is uh, basically a character that works high in a company that made it big. They're all, uh, about, about a corporation where they're all backstabbing assholes. But what happens is there's this virus in this out in this world, and this virus, what it does is when it gets into and when it gets in this building, it gets, it gets this virus is in this whole building. So when you get this virus, what it does for for the next eight hours because they have a cure, but you can't put the cure they can't put the cure in for eight hours. I don't understand the whole thing, but so when they get this virus, it makes them angry, it makes them mad, so they, they start killing each other. It's it's like they're zombies without turning into zombies. Mayhem. There, there. there it yeah, is. I want to watch this. I haven't seen it. So, so I don't want to spoil anything, but for eight hours, you kind of got permission to kill anybody you want because they'll let you get away with it because they understand you're under the virus. And it's about how the corporation are assholes and dickheads. It's about this guy getting revenge on them, trying to get to the highest floor to basically to kill off you know the main guy. But they all use the virus. So if you think about the real world. You got the virus out there. They're gonna come out with a fake Tom Hanks, you know, you know, vaccine, and you got permission to do certain things because of the virus. So the movie, I know nobody's seen the movie, but but I don't want to spoil nothing now since I know he has it and he hasn't seen it. But it's a cool watch, and if you have Shutter, it's actually free on Shutter. Yeah, I want to get that. Let's see a couple other ones I put uh, that predicted. Let's see. Some of those seventies dystopias, a lot of people forget those. Those are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Like Logan's Run, Zardoz, Zardoz, uh, obviously, obviously, Holy Blade Runner. Zardoz, good one. Blade Runner obviously predicted a lot of where we're at, and then some people forget that the Bond films predict stuff like Moonraker. There's a lot of predictive stuff in Moonraker. <laughs> hey, trust me, everybody in our chat, they all see Moonraker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because Braces. of the braces and Dolly. <laughs> Dolly braces. So you don't have a oh movie. Mandela effect, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's, <laughs> I still remember with braces. I didn't even talk about it, but I like I, she had braces, man. That's the whole idea of the bad guy with his silver ass. We knew the guy. We knew the guy from North Fork up in, where we live in California. It's like there he is. That's the guy in Moonraker. He's he's Jaws. He's big ass guy at the football game sitting there. I'm like, he had a thing for a young girl with braces. <laughs> he's into the braces thing. He should go to Thailand. This is where it's hot now. But yeah, you know, so now there's no braces. We're like, uh, one of the fun things we can talk about. People are like, no braces for sure. No, I got Repo Man, um, Donnie Darko, um, the Flamingo Kid, uh, and the Flintstones um, entire cartoon series, along with um, Bugs Bunny. Flintstones. Flintstones, yeah, the whole series, the cartoon series. Explain that to me. How does that predict where we are? Oh, dude, uh, they've got the Freemasonry, uh, you know, they've got uh, the predictability of smoking in the show, uh, technology with the cars. Everything is like, if you look at all the animals that were uh, actual uh, appliances in the house, you can you can see the appliances like, did they even have that? You have to watch the cartoons. You'll see like the animals are the appliances. Again, he was in the, the as a great grand poobah, uh, the, the the water buffalo lodge, all Freemasonry. All the whole thing is about. Uh, uh, the, he worked in the uh, quarry, rock quarry, for Mister Slate. Uh, you can start putting a lot of these things together. It, Are you struggling or being serious? I can't tell. I'm being serious, dude. No, you need to go back. You be just go back, and you're gonna sit there because you got the eyes to see. You know, you got the eyes to see. Just watch a little bit of the Flintstones and just go, you know what? <laughs> this is kind of a what we are in the future. I mean, I guess it's plausible that it's, uh, you know, if you go back and watch G.I. Joe, which I did do yeah. uh, three or four years ago, that's got everything. It's got MK Ultra. It's got all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's the same thing for the military. But uh, Flintstones, they, they literally have, like, if you they go to the lodge, they, they, they go, they have the Grand Poobah in there and they have the, 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 the order of the buffalo, whatever I can't, the water buffalo lodge. They go in. They have all the lodge members, and they got their Pez hats, and they're and they're I making. I remember the, the water buffalo lodge. Yeah, yeah, and so they're making decisions that if you look at now, and you're like, 
this was made back in that time. This is like, this was made, and this was the first, this is the Simpsons of the, the 50s and 60s. Right. This is yeah. the Simpsons. So when you talk about yep. controlling the masses, the Flintstones was the original, was the original mind control because you got the children to watch with you. You got the wife to watch with you. Uh, all the males had PTSD from the war. They don't sit down and watch TV with their wives. They sit alone at the table and listen to the radio, or they watch it from a distance from the table while the kids are on the couch. But with the Flintstones, the family sat together. They ate, and that's when the TV dinners come out. So everyone had TV dinners at the same time because of the Flintstones. You know, I just gotcha. saying the TV, right, right, right. TV two time. And then the Flintstone is just the same thing. It's the, it's the Simpsons. It is one hundred percent the Simpsons. Yeah. Can, can I uh, go tinkle real quick? I apologize. I drank a lot of coffee. So You've probably gotta, been drinking. Right back. I got a tinkle. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like the Flintstones. Who never thought about that? I mean, you, I guess you could say the Jetsons in a way because the Jetsons. The had Jetsons, had another one. Yeah. This, that that well, started to do everything for them. Well, remember the Jetsons is the same thing as uh, remember uh, Futurama. Futurama, so had, uh, yeah, yeah. You had the Simpsons, and then you had Futurama. It's the same. It's the same break off. It's the exact same break off. And then they had the King of the Hill, right? Remember King of the Hill? Come out, we were watching that one, and then they broke oh. it off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, it's the same shit. It's the same thing. What is he right? As Bob says, never, never lie during the apocalypse. Never lie during the apocalypse. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it now. Man. Even cartoons are made by grown men, grown yeah. men, grown women. So, you know, everybody who, who does their own show or do, do their own thing kind of puts in a little bit of what they see into their show, into yeah. their cartoons. I mean, the, like you said, ah, this person wrote the Jetsons too, you know? You know, being robot, yeah. robot and stuff. And then, I was about to mention the Jetsons, Jetsons. yeah, with uh, yeah. the robot made and all that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah mean, which, which is, which is Futurama. Say, you I know, Futurama say, from the. Yeah. What about, what about like Buck Rogers, right? He comes. Buck Rogers, totally. Home, he comes back to Earth, and then it's like the they, all, they all talk to an AI, they talk to a computer that's like, is their new doctor? Yeah. Uh, it's. You're Twiggy right. had Doctor Theopolis, man. Twiggy, Twiggy, Twiggy had Doctor Theopolis around his neck, and um, and they would talk to him. He'd have a really deep voice too. Buck, you shouldn't do this. You know, he's always the consciousness. He's like the smart one he, on the other robot, and so Buck is out at like he's like you do. He's like you, Jay. He's just like a dude. He's just like kind of chilling and figuring things out like on the fly. <laughs> no, let me tell you how to do it. <laughs> like, no, I have got a different idea. I'm a, I'm a, I'm from a different sensory. So you had a different thing, but Eric, I have a gift for Jay. I wanted to. I saved this one that nobody's talking about specifically for him. Um, can you bring up the NASA symbol? Okay, let me hold on. Because <laughs> he 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 knows how to do certain things. We'll see. You'll like. This. Well, again, nothing I say is true. So I mean, just take it with a grain of salt. It might be wrong, but I found this the other day. I wanted to say it, but I said, uh, Jay's going to be here, so I want to get it to him. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so um, you see the circle. And now, I don't remember it ever being like that, but anyway, who cares? That's a long story, different story. Now, there's a circle on there, and it's circling two letters. What letters are they circling? A, S. Okay, so going back to your uh, Pythagorean blah, blah, blahs, um, I'll show you guys this one. I'll show it up on here. Now, A is one, right? So mm -hmm. we start with. You know, A is one. This is for not for you, Jay. These are for the audience. And then you cool down. You guys see how that works out like that, right? This is how I do my thing. So J is one, and uh, S is on the alphabetical numerical thing, nineteen. So together you got nine one one, right there. Nine one one, nine eleven, backwards. Nine eleven. We have one for A, and then the S is 19. Again, it's just throwing straw up into the wind and see what happens. But um, they've been flashing this since uh, the 50s, they said. I don't remember that. but um, So the A and the S is the only thing in the circle, the circle, and it's 9-11.
just throwing at you guys. I never, I never heard you say that before. That's interesting. No, I just, I don't know. I was sitting around. I was um, watching porn, and then all of a sudden, I was thinking about NASA. I don't know why it happened, but it happened. And so I was looking in the circle of the symbol because, and then the the way the was going through it, and then I was like, "Hey, wait a minute! The A and the S. That's A is one, and S is nineteen. That's nine eleven in your face. My God, they got nine eleven in your face. That's kind of a Star Trek symbol. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Yeah. That was like Star Trek. That's probably intentional. In fact, uh, yeah. Rand, Rand Corporation consulted with Gene Roddenberry to create the, you know, like the, the, what do you call it? The room where the, the, they all, the control room or whatever you call it. Yeah. That was yeah, all designed yeah, yeah. by the Rand Corporation. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Is, no joke. Is this a Star Trek? Yeah, what's the what's the control? You know, where Captain Kirk yeah, is uh, the bridge. The bridge. <laughs> the, the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bridge. Uh, that was uh, designed by the Rand Corporation. No joke. Cool. Yeah, we seen that. I seen that in a museum. I worked at museums my whole life, so I I saw the actual control room in a museum. Eric, remember the uh, museum in Seattle, the 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 the, the rock and roll museum. Oh, the museum, oh. Museum of Museum of Music, Rock and Roll. You know, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, they had the star, the Star Wars or the Star Trek, the Star Trek exhibit. I was a ner- I wasn't a nerd, but but I'm, a, I'm I'm I work for museums, so I just I got a free, so I wanted to go in there and, and see it. Okay, I wanted to go see Star Trek shit. I wanted to see the art. I work with exhibits, so I make toys. I wanted to see the chair that he sat in, and when we went in there, and I was like, oh my god, man, this is like cheap, plasticky, bad old shit. It don't look like anything that comes up than the camera. It don't look like anything. You're talking Again, about the, with the, the flat, yeah, yeah. They had the museum Star, of pop culture, the Star Trek exhibit, yeah. And then they, they, it was really cheesy, man. It was like <laughs> it's really bad, blinking lights with the plastic panel. I'm like, wow, this is it. This is this is not exciting. You can make this yourself. You're you and your son can make this in the garage. How cheesy yeah, but, it was. Well, remember the when it came out. You probably couldn't during the time the original Star Trek came out. Now you can. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, was, that was pretty modern for that stuff. Remember, Star Trek predicted iPads. You know, they were having see through iPads. Yeah. yeah. Now they're everywhere. They're not see through yet. That was so it was the sliding doors, the bridge, the communicators, uh, yeah. the screen pads. That was all the stuff listed that Rand Corporation consulted on for the original. Star Trek. Oh shit! So they were okay. They were kind of so prepping people for what they expected. You know, would kind of be the normative technology. Hmm. This kind of, yes, yes. Not a weird question, but let's see. What directors does Jay consider the most used vehicles for social conditioning? Ooh, Ooh that's wow. a good one. <laughs> no, that's a good some question. Are, some of them are hard to to place because you wonder, you know, how far was Kubrick, you know, part of the system, how far, how, uh, how much of it was him eventually kind of getting fed up and wanting to expose stuff like with, uh, you know, eyes wide shut. But I mean, Kubrick yeah. obviously has had a huge influence. I think Spielberg was uh, intentionally there to promote the alien uh, story, the alien mythology to give us a new alien uh, panspermia type myth- mythos um, conditioning. Uh, I don't know who is the most, I mean, those are the top ones for maybe social engineering type stuff, but uh, the most esoteric and occult ones would be like David Lynch, Kubrick, Darren Aronofsky. If you watch Darren Aronofsky films, they're all basically Kabbalism from Pi to to, uh, Black Swan to, um, what's the one with... um, Rachel Weisz, Hugh Jackman, you know, where it's like, it's a, it's a mix of Kabbalism and Zen. Uh, I did a whole analysis. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hugh Jackman. I did a whole analysis of it, and now I forgot the name of it. <laughs> Eric, just put in Hugh Jackman, and we'll see a list of movies, because I, I'm the same way, dude. Um, the I, Fountain. Seen- did you see The Fountain? The Fountain. Fountain? Yes, 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 yes. That's, uh, yeah. that's Darren Aronofsky. So he's like the most, probably the most esoteric type of director. I didn't even see Mother. Everybody was talking about how crazy Mother was with 
uh, Jennifer Lawrence and like cannibalism and all this kind of satanic type stuff. I, don't, I haven't seen it, but it sounds oh, pretty wild. That was like uh, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, kind of exactly. yeah, You know, I'm in England, dude, and I don't know if you knew it, but um, oh, uh, Kate. This was funny, dude. Kate had uh, her second baby in England. She had a, she had a picture. They had a, 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 all the press were taking her picture. Oh, I Go saw this. The Rosemary she baby wore dress. the Rosemary baby's dress. Yeah. You saw, she wore the ro the actual Rosemary I baby. Still coffee. Hold on. She wore the Rosemary baby's dress in the movie from the like the, not from the actual one, but the the fake version of it. I was yeah. like, what? I, I I remember the movie Mother. I remember. A lot of people were angry because oh, yeah. when they showed trailers for this movie Mother, it made it look like it was a horror movie. Yeah. Like like, like a will be like a scary horror. And when you went and saw it, it was nothing but a horror movie. It was not it was, you know, but people were angry that they thought they were paying for this and they got this. You know, yeah, at least she, and it's at like least you had a set of nudes out. You can always fall back on her nude uh, leaked photos. If, but, you know, that kind of adds to the movie. You can watch the movie. Another movie where I had the wrong impression, and a lot of people liked it, but I freaking hated it, was Midsummer. You know, I thought I thought Midsummer looked cool. They're going to be going to this, uh, uh, this other country, this cult. And I was watching this movie, and I was like, this is a piece of shit. Oh yeah, that guy Ari Ari Aster. He he did Hereditary and then Midsummer. Yeah, I did an analysis of all, all those. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I was trying to take this movie serious, and then when this when this drugged out guy was having sex with this girl, and this old lady was pushing his butt, I'm oh. like, and she and they were, all, <laughs> they were all singing, and I was like, okay. And then there's a end, they're all getting burned. I'm like, can somebody put me in that barn to get burnt up because? Maybe he was tired. Maybe the old woman was the serpent. I don't know. I had the wrong. I don't know. I should have known because his other movies are kind of the same way. But I don't know. Don't was, you want a towel maiden during sex? I would love to have a towel maiden during sex. Towel, please. It wasn't like they're having sex. An old lady was like pushing his butt. And they were all like, just a little bit of help, you know. So you get tired, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I get a little assistance here? <laughs> a little a towel maid. I don't want a hot towel maid. I want an old woman to hand me a towel. I'm thinking this guy is half drugged out. They drugged the shit out of him. I, I haven't heard a lot of people, I'm not trying to get sexual here, but get it up when you're on that much drugs. But I guess yeah. some kind of a potent thing to get that part up when you're even on drugs. But but you know what? I'm going to ask uh, uh, Jay something. Maybe I'm totally wrong. You know, Okay, we all know the, the Matrix movies. The one, two, and three, where the Matrix movie took Matrix to a whole new level, right? And I don't hear a lot of people giving credit to I consider one of the pre-Matrix movies out there. That, What's that me to me, you know, Tron, Tron, because yeah. if you think about Tron, what's the movie about? He gets he gets he's into computer and he's basically living inside the computer if he dies in the computer he dies in real life that's great I mean, yeah that's the beginning stages of an ai trying to take over that you kind of saw on the screen i know matrix started the big craze of the matrix but i would say that you call tron matrix yeah. oh, am I, am I crazy on that jay there's multiple pre-Matrix Matrix, Matrix movies. You're totally right about that. I mean, Tron is, is one of the most obvious, but you've also got uh, Johnny Mnemonic. Uh, that's kind of yep. the same idea. You get a jack in, do all this kind of stuff, which is a B movie. And by the way, did you know? Have you noticed that uh, Keanu plays Agent Smith in Johnny Mnemonic? <laughs> it's like, I didn't, I didn't it's like right. Whoa. I didn't yeah, that yeah. He plays Smith. Oh, I didn't. I forgot. He's agent. Name. He's oh. Agent Smith agent. in Johnny Mnemonic, and then like a year or two later, he's Keanu versus Agent Smith in the Matrix. But you even got you can right. say Terminator is kind of a Matrix because the AI takes over right. and all that. But Tron was that like kind of the first like commercial for all agents will see because oh, Terminator. Oh, is they? I got yeah. a chapter on that in the, in this one by the way. I did an essay on Tron, and you're totally right. And I noted that it was the pre-Matrix Matrix, so you, you it has a Gnostic uh, uh, esoteric theme to it as well. And it, it's, it's definitely like a preparatory type of 
thing for the matrix. And when I did the analysis of uh, Annie Jacobson's history of DARPA, she actually admits that all the way back, you know, to the beginning of the founding of DARPA right around, uh, right after the time of like um, the SDI star Wars defense initiative, that DARPA that they were consulting with Hollywood even back then. So that there's always been this pretty close relationship between not just CIA and Hollywood, but the, you know, R and D like high level tech stuff in Hollywood too. Oh yeah, yeah. Now Disney <laughs> is <laughs> uh, they're yeah. in talk to do another uh, another uh, Tron movie. Now hopefully it's not a sequel because I don't know, man. You know, now my opinion Tron has so much that you could do with. I think Tron. I will say this. I don't. I don't think. I think Tron will be better not as a movie, as a streaming show maybe because then you can really dissect. You know, Matrix even more instead of putting it out in a movie. Did you know that within Tron it mentions Stratcom? It mentions Usecom, <laughs> Stratcom. Yeah, I did not know that. Now this this image is not in Tron, but in the screenplay it mentions Stratcom. I mentioned that in my essay. So so they they were definitely pulling from from you know real stuff there. Wow. And yeah, I, I love uh, Tron. Also, the colors, the colors are relevant. The colors are all relevant. They're all symbolic. People like they ignore colors. I'm like, colors are number one. Like when I watched, um, when I watched The Matrix, I said, guys, you can see the green, you can see the red. They're the green and red are the opposites. Black and white. It's du duality, man. It's duality. Then you see the blues. The, you, you can see the colors in each scene. I'm like, I could see, I, I could see the duality. It's right there in front of you. That. The light would be a bright red, and then he'd be a green. <laughs> like you could say the damn duality, but people don't see it. They're like, they're just going into the movie. Like, look at this. Well, I like watching movies for movies sometimes too. I, have, I don't want to sit there and look I have, at them. I have a question for the chat. Oh, I want to see if they, they they'll get this. I, I know Jay will get this easy. Okay, very aggressive. Keanu Reeves was not the original guy they wanted. Oh, okay, God. the original guy they wanted was Will Smith. I mean, that's documented. He was offered the part, but he turned it down to do another movie. Does oh. anybody in the chat know what movie did Will Smith turned The Matrix down for? I like the movie, though, Eric. People I'm, hate I'm the guessing movie. it would be MIB. Uh, it was around the same time. Wasn't no? that movie? It, it was around the same time, but it was for another movie. It was not. It was, it was washed under. It didn't okay. do well. It didn't do well. I don't anyway. know. It, 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 it Let's just say there's a gigantic, I don't know, robot spider in this movie. It's based off a TV series from the 70s. It's a Western. Oh, that. It, yeah. yeah. You, know, know. You're, you probably know what it is. You just don't know the name. I know what it is now. Wild West. Wild West. Wild West. Wild West. Of course, you never know what movie's going to hit it big and what movie's not. So, I right. mean, it's not like. It, you know, everything's there, but I you know, I the Matrix uh, movies, uh, it was interesting because, you know, the, the, the original plot wasn't to use humans as batteries. It was actually to use humans as, like, part of the brain to to forward, but they decided to use batteries. And I know Matrix 2 and 3 got kind of bashed. Because yeah. of the one. But the thing is, the first Matrix kind of like, it was a new kind of a movie where how do you wake up? You're waking up into a whole new world. You know, yeah. it's it's whole brand new. And then, you know, two and three, they're like, well, it's not as good as the first one. Well, it's hard to beat the first one, even in the first place. Okay. It, it is hard. Yeah. But once, once you get out of the matrix, then you kind of do transfer more into an adventure movie because you can't keep waking up. You can't relive the first matrix, right? You're already out of it. You know, you know, the, you know the birthday, right? On, Neo's passport is 9-11. Yeah. 2001. But also 13. There's a 13 on there also. Mm -hmm. 13 is relevant. Let's look at his uh, 13 on there. A 13 is another repeated number in everything. Like everything has a 13, a numerical of 311, 33, 3, a third. I see 13s like probably five times a day in everything, like everything. But 9-11 also, yeah. Not, well, 9-11 breaks down. If you do its prime... It's a pr or it's a compound. So compounds going down to its prime, which is three. Then it goes back down to thirteen. So anything with nine, anything nineteen goes down to its uh, prime. Now, so major gender message. Well, I mean, I mean, technically, what? Eh. 
that, that defeated. Well, what, what defeated? Not defeated. Because they're making a Matrix Four. Well, look at the directors. I think, I think making a Matrix Four is a mistake. Uh, because they're bringing back Keanu Reeves, it's a big mistake. Because you're taking what whatever you saw in three, it's like that doesn't fucking matter. Because now there's a fourth come one coming out. If they want to do a reboot, go for it. But to make well, the directors, Eric, yeah. remember they're, they're transgender. They're trans. Yeah. They're transgender. Yeah. So they got two directors yeah. that switched the. The girls. Defeated is the love, the word love, because you know the robots, I, AI can't can't recreate love. I don't usually like when love is always the answer, but it did work for the Matrix. Yeah, you know, things that that I don't like in movies when they reuse like the word love. Like, like I'll tell you guys this. I don't know how Jay feels about uh, the original really? Superman movie. You know, Superman the movie. I don't know if Jay agrees with me on this. How you like the movie now? As a kid, when I saw Superman the movie, I didn't really like it. Uh, I mean, Superman flying was cool, but the love scenes were too long. But the part that I did not like Superman was I hate it when they bring in time travel. I freaking hate it because when Lois Lane dies, gets buried, oh, he spins around the, the planet, spins around, goes back in time, and saves his life. That ruins it for me because I'm always like, well – you can save everybody's lives now that way. What what makes her so special? Why don't you just spin around the earth again and save that person? Kind of like, like the Avengers. I like the Avengers, but now when you bring in time travel, hell, you want to bring back Iron Man? Fuck it. Just do time yeah. travel. Captain America, he can he's bang going. Lois. He can keep banging Lois, though. Eric, he can go back in time and bang Lois again. Didn't like that. <laughs> then he can go back and bang her again. He can go bang anybody he wants, and Lois no. will never know. Time travel's perfect for like Back to the Future. But I get tired with some movies. They use time travel. It just it fixes too many things that it. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Am I off today? Is that too crazy? Am I going? Am I thinking too much into it? Um, I mean, I'm like you. I get really tired of the ta- the time travel plot. I mean, they just stick it in stuff as like a placeholder kind of thing. Maybe when they don't know what else to do. Uh, remember the. Uh, they did it with Star Trek. I mean, they, yeah, they did it with uh, the more recent uh, X Men too. Remember, like the last two or three X Men installments. Yeah. Yep. All oh, yeah. Time yeah. Travel. Yeah. It's always the same thing. It's like whether it's Back to the Future, whether whether it's Terminator. It's just let's do the same thing and put them in the conundrum of you know. It's just it's overused. I think it's pickle. dumb. It's the pickle. It's <laughs> they call like, it the pickle. If you don't have but, an idea. Well, let's just race what happened and go back and erase it, and now we start over. I mean, even the- can we go back in time before people <laughs> made that movie? Right? I mean, is that possible? Yeah, but they did fuck with you, though. I keep trying to tell people you gotta watch close because they did fuck with you on purpose just to see if people would catch it. Uh, the end game, what they did was they did time travel, and then when everything, uh, so you had the you had the archer, right? So he's at his house. And behind him at his house, the first part of the scene, guys, go back and watch it. You're going to see the American flag with the red stripe underneath, the, the blue box. That's how I remembered it, the red stripe underneath. And so later on, after they did time travel, he goes back. You see him back at the house. You're going to see the same American flag, but with the white stripe underneath. So the timeline's changed. And they kind of show you uh, small eggs all along the second part when everything's back to normal and people were alive. You start seeing these little Easter eggs of the white stripe and then all the, 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 the certain symbols of, the, of a different timeline. So they didn't just come back home. They, they fucked up time. They literally come back to a different line. And, they, and people didn't catch it. There's a lot of little Easter eggs. I was like, so we got to watch the second half of the movie after they come back because they start putting these eggs everywhere. You're like, wow, okay, so people are like, oh, they went back home, everything's normal again. Actually, it's not normal. <laughs> it's, Marty, got- Marty, Marty, yeah. <laughs> they, Captain America technically kind of screwed, ruined that because the rule they put out in the movie saying, put the stones back, you can't change nothing and come back. Well, he decided to stay. He stayed, you know, yeah. He stays with that woman where every if she has a kid, because remember uh, in the other Avenger, he kisses that d- nephew, daughter, whatever. Well, she would have yeah. been or she wouldn't have even been there. So you yeah. are they, they fucked up their own rules that they put in their own movie. Well, they did it on purpose. That's why they showed everything different. They showed little eggs of things different. But and he's a military guy. There's no way he banged one chick. So he, he probably yeah. has all kinds of new kids everywhere. You never know who's really dead. Like, okay, here's Loki. Guess what? Loki's getting a series on Disney Plus. Why? Well, they brought him back through time travel. He picks up the blue thing, he disappears. 
So now it's like, every time I watch a movie, now it's like, oh, fuck it. He'll probably be back. He's dead. Okay. You know, movie, shows like Game of Thrones. When you fucking die, you're dead. You're yeah. dead. <laughs> you're not in the show. <laughs> so I yeah. appreciate certain things where you're dead. You're dead. You don't get to come you're back. You're not back in the show. Sorry. Unless you had like an imaginary scene. I'm imagining him. You know, imagining her an imagination scene. Yeah. Other than that, don't 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 time travel. He's got a lot of things to correct, <laughs> a lot of things to fix. But I'm not a fan of the time travels. It's it's an easy. It's a Twinkie. We call, you know, you know, in college they called it the Twinkie. Everything's fucked. There's no way out of this situation. What do we need? A Twinkie. It comes in time travel. We fix the problem. It's like a simple fix. The Twinkie. <laughs> they called it that. I, mean, I had a professor call it in college. When you're writing a paper and you can't get out of the hole and you wrote too much and you can't put an ending to it, he says, always have a Twinkie. Could you say, because now, 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 like Jay, you have a book about symbols, and Bob, you're talking about like symbols. Now, if you go to yeah. the Matrix director, the same director who made uh, The Matrix actually made Jupiter Ascending. Uh, he made V for Vendetta. He also did Tracer, which I liked. I, was, I, I thought it was underrated. But like you're saying, Bob, now I didn't like. Jupiter Center too much, but like you said, but yeah, but he put messages in all the Jay Prop. I know you've talked about the Jupiter City. That thing's filled with messages. I did, I did an analysis of that, yeah. I'll leave it alone with you, dude. <laughs> you could talk about I just it. said it was like feminism, like Gnostic feminism was the whole point of that movie. Um off the top of my I'm going from memory here. I remember uh Mila Kunis is like the goddess, right? Doesn't she become some version of the goddess or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's the queen because the bees, all the bees. She, they were like they're being yeah. harassed by bees, but she walks outside and they swarm her and they go, "Oh, you understand that you are the queen, and only the queen can bring the bees around. The bees will follow the queen." And then from there, it got really bad. But uh, you know, with the wolf guy, but um, yeah, it, it like you said, it was just it was a message, pure message movie, one thousand percent. Like here's for the public to see. This is us talking to you and through a movie. I'm like, oh, okay, it was boring. I was like, it's just, just, I could just, all I did was like, I did like you, Jay. I was like this. Okay, let's just, it's yeah, just, just I, I wasn't a bit impressed with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I actually, uh, a lot of people hated Cloud Atlas, but there was quite a bit of, uh, I mean, overall, I'm not a huge fan of Cloud Atlas, which was Wachowski uh, produced, I think. It was Tom Pike for yep. the movie, but um, I think he did it. But uh, have you seen Run Lola Run, by the way? Uh, His- Cloud Atlas was directed by The Matrix Guy, so you are right. Uh, but what? Wait, I thought Cloud Atlas was directed or produced by uh, Tom Tykfer, and then the Wachowski yeah. did something. Oh, okay. And I know, yeah, Tykfer, I know. Tykfer did uh, uh, Run All and Run, which is really good. But the anyway. brother, the Wachowski brothers, they yeah. work. Yeah. They worked on the Matrix, Saturn, uh, the Matrix Reloaded Revolution, and they also worked on Cloud Atlas, Jupiter Ascending, yeah. uh, yeah. Netflix series called Since Eight. But yeah, it had the, it had the it had like the fast food religion in the the North Korea, the Korean future. Do you remember one of the futures is yeah. like Korea, and there's a fast food religion where they recycle humans and feed them to people. And you go yeah. to McDonald's, and it's like a religion. It's like a, a liturgical worship service with like these uh, waitresses. And so I, I thought that, yeah. that that part alone made the movie uh, worth watching. That part was cool. <laughs> yeah, they're reincarnates. They're all together. Each each one of them is. They're a different character in a different, I wouldn't Time. say dimension, but in a different, yeah, part of the movie with that ta- returning tattoo, which kind of tied you back to the protagonist. With, this is the new person, the new version of them in another body. Right. And then another person with the same tattoo in another body. And all the people surrounding them, either bad or good or hate each other or fought each other, they're always together. No matter what the new place is going to be, they're always attached to each other in some situation. Um, I thought that was... I caught that right off the bat. I go, oh, so these people, like when uh, Tom Hanks, which is the biggest whatever in Hollywood, um, he he threw that guy over the edge. He was all yeah. psychotic and whatever. I was like, yeah, right. but he's attached to this guy, which is attached to this person. And then the next one, he's a different character or incarnate or soul-wise doing the same kind of weird whatever interaction with the same people with different bodies. I was like, oh, different avatars. I go, oh shit! So it's not a good movie. I didn't enjoy it. However, I enjoyed the again with the. Here we go with another one of those. Let's just figure it out from here. Just write it up. But yeah, 
Cloud, I told Eric, Cloud Atlas is, you got to go back. Eric's like, I don't want to watch it stupid. I said, yeah, but it's not, don't watch the movie, but watch the movie. <laughs> I didn't say it was stupid. It just wasn't a movie that I want to watch yes. twice, three times. It wasn't bad. It oh, just wasn't boring. I go back and watch it once a year. It's not one Another of Another message movie. Like he was talking about the esoteric of Hollywood. That is it. The quintessential. I mean, he's writing the books on it. It's like, so you don't have to, guys, he's write the book so you don't have to watch the movie. <laughs> just go to his books and don't go over the movie and just say, okay, okay. Well, I didn't put Cloud Atlas in, in there. I mean, oh, that's not, that's not remember, the book. remember, I'm the guy who's justifying why Trick or Treat 1986 movie was brilliant. Remember? I, like, I, said, <laughs> yeah. God, I remember seeing that in the theater. I remember that. That's good. <laughs> I loved it, too. I told yesterday, Jay, that I was trying to convince people how the movie was more brilliant, brilliant than you think. But yes, really. I want to ask this uh, Dark Glass Woody uh, to to go a little bit more with his question here because he wrote, "What year did cinema die and did streaming kill it?" I wanted to ask him. Now, are we talking about when you think when cinema the last quality movie, or do you think the cinema theaters are dead? Because my my thing is, the cinema experience will never die. This is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain why. If that's what he's talking about, or I don't know if he's talking about quality. Uh, streaming services don't they make money, but they don't make that much money. Okay, so say you got Disney Plus, right? You're making, uh, you're making a movie for a hundred million, or even a two hundred million superhero movie. You're not gonna make money just putting that movie out on a streaming service. Okay, in a in a in a cinema, those movies make billions of dollars. Okay. Hmm. Now, when you bring in a billion dollars, that feeds to make little movies on your streaming services. So, so even though we're living through this coronavirus era, AMC is almost on on the edge of collapse. And I'm telling people, trust me, yeah. trust me, these big studios are not going to let AMC crash and die because they <laughs> need to be there to feed their movies. Because you need these big blockbusters. It's kind of like football in college. You need the college football game to feed the other sports teams. Okay? Now, streaming services, they're, they're nice, but you put $200 million in Irishman, it's not going to make a profit. To make money back from a movie, it has to be on a big screen. Now, Jay, am I wrong on that? Uh, am I going too far? But cinemas will be needed to make the big money. I mean, it's just... It's a great question. I mean, I, uh, yeah, kind of like bookstores or, you know, print. I mean, there will always be bookstores and there'll be print books going around, even though the industry kind of is dying uh, in the same way. Probably, you know, radio didn't didn't put an end to or uh, excuse me, records and CDs didn't put an end to radio. So there will be some form, I think, of the, of the classical uh, uh, theater. But uh, definitely streaming seems to be helping to put it out but i would just argue that the quality has really just declined the more that we get kind of the social justice you talk about the quality you're right thank on that. you thank you i've been screaming that I, well i've been watching movies i, I think it's declined since the 90s basically i think the ever since the 90s movies have really just have been on the decline cinema thank in terms you. of quality of film no no that, that i can't stand the dark i can't stand the dark <laughs> That, that's perfect. That's what I was trying to ask the chat. Now, are they talking about yeah. the quality? Because you're right. The quality is not the same. You might have one gem out of a thousand, but you're getting less gems every single year. Everything, exactly. is, about, everything is about the reboot and you know the remakes and stuff. Because what's oh. sad is, is there is some original content out there, but the problem is if you put original content out, nobody watches it. Now, you put a reboot or a remake, people watch it. It's sad to to get to flip around. People have to be willing to spend money to see original content story, but people aren't. the The average person will not. So those kind of original content will be put on a streaming service. Now you go to Netflix, you got like 10, 10 million shows, and you don't even know what's on there. You don't even know I there's a gym on there. That's the problem that we're causing this issue ourselves because we're only seeing the big movies. Yeah, when is Jay gonna write a? When are you gonna write a movie, man? When are you gonna write a script? Write a real one. Write something. You got you. You know what's good. You could probably put something together pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, it costs the money to make a movie, and actually, people that do screen screenwriters don't make very much money. So yeah, it sucks. 
God, but and nobody wants to do it. I can't find. It's like the, the good ones are gone, and no one's writing anything good. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what to do now. I'm just gonna like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll watch a fireplace. I'll just like watch. I went to the laundry today. I had a great time at the dryer uh, with the dryer. I enjoyed the dryer. Yeah. I had the tumble dryer, so I so you can do different settings. Depends on what you want. Yeah. It's really enjoyable. Yeah. I'll write a movie yeah. about a dryer. Yeah, independent writers. Yeah, they don't yeah. make that much. I mean, now, a lot of directors actually write their own movies too now. So that takes right. away from the original writers. It's pretty sad that you know you don't you don't get like a percent or a two percent from a movie what it makes. You know, if a movie does great, they might give you a little bump to do a sequel. You know, write it to the sequel. But if you look at sometimes these sequels, they're they're made by other writers because the companies don't want to spend even more money on these great writers. Yeah, like the movie The Room. It was one of the greatest movies ever made. Um, they need to do a part two to the room, and so we could all see that. We, I, I will go with Jay. If you want to, if they make another movie, The Room, call me up. We'll go see it. It's gonna be. Yeah. Oh hi, Mark. <laughs> It'll be a midnight showing of The Room. We'll go see it. Right. Why not just use yeah. The Room, Holly? No, it's not Hollywood. We got green screen. <laughs> We'll watch Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then right after that, it'll be The Room. We'll watch that. And then they'll put on uh, Lord of the Rings. Same thing. Same same storyline. The Room and Lord of the Rings are exactly the same. I don't know if people put them together. I think they're the same. <laughs> Did you have a TV show? Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't, I, I'm sorry. I didn't even know that. What's yeah, that? It's a full season uh, production. Full, one full season of a full production TV show. You can go watch it at Gaia TV. Seriously, um, wow. there's one. Uh, yeah, you just go go to the Lord of the Rings episode. It's the free episode, so it's on uh, streaming on I don't know Comcast or all those different things. Oh <laughs> shit, dude, you're like celebrity. I'm a confirmed <laughs> celebrity. What are you doing here? <laughs> okay, whoa. you guys harassed me so many times. I thought I would come. You were like, oh good, yeah. You, after you the got 20 the message, I was like, all right, ZZ Todd wants to interview me. Let's do it. Yeah, you got the. The burning bag of poop on your doorstep, right? Yeah. I thought that was the final yeah. one. The monster yeah. morning. The funny yeah. thing is, the horse not, head. You got the horse head delivery. He, good, he's, good. he's correct because somebody did email me saying, "Dude, how'd you get Jay to come on your show?" I, I, I asked. That's what I said. So I now asked. that I've said that, I'm going to get bombarded with harassment. Like, dude, you haven't done my show, you piece of shit. I know. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, went you went on those assholes. Yeah. How many horse heads do I got to send to get on my show? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wake it up with those assholes. You won't come on. Chill, I'm gonna trade it for a llama. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna trade it for a llama's head or an emu. I wake yeah. up with a parakeet head in my bed. <laughs> that's an original like that's an original one. I'll go on. I mean horse is a little over the top. That takes a lot of work, right? A horse is heavy. Just get a little put a little hair parakeet head in my bed and I'll I'll do yeah. your thing. To be honest, people, we uh, could not afford a horse, so um, we did get we did get a couple of uh, rodents down the road. <laughs> a hamster yeah, head. Did. Yeah, you, know, you got a little, you had a tiny guillotine, and you you chopped up. <laughs> I woke up and it was I was staring at a headless, a, a, a headed, a, a one, a head of a hamster. <laughs> we had a guy on our show that has a lot of big following, and he he said on air on our show. Well, the reason I come on your show because I don't have to do anything. I just come on here and just enjoy and talk. You have to do nothing. So I'm like, let the audience ask. Is that a, is that a hit piece or is that a compliment? Yeah. Who, who, who was that? Who came on? It was. Uh, it was. I don't want to say his name now because we're not. We're not super good friends at the moment. He oh. kind of. I, I felt their show kind of went too angry, but he did say a comment one time that. That I go on there's your show, so I don't have to work at it. It, it, it. It's not that I don't want to say his name. It's just the show okay. became more um, hated. He does, he does a lot of hatred speech now. I'm kind of not for the hatred. I'm yeah, like, you were. we're living in tough times. We got to enjoy life where it is. Okay, not everything is bad. Not everything is falling apart. Uh, there's there's no soldiers knocking on my door and say you better take this shot. You know. Well, we had the, we had the guy with Eric. The, he did the short documentary. It's not that guy, right? The short documentary was uh, Star Wars. The Star Wars, the Star Wars oh, helmet hitting guy. No, 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 no. That, no that's oh, that, he, he was cool. He was a helmet hitter. Awesome. No, he loves us. Yeah, he did that short. He did an actual uh, documentary on um, Star Trek or no uh, Star Wars. He did where a there was a on 
He made a documentary about the Star Wars stormtrooper who bumped his head uh, in, uh, in the very first Star Wars movie. And the documentary, Kevin Smith was on the documentary. Some other people was on it. The idea was, who was that guy who hit his head? And they he kept had, it in the movie. They kept, they kept the hit in the movie. So it's like, who? The, what? Did you just see that guy hit his head against the top? It was silly. And he did a whole documentary, including lie detector tests. The whole, he did a high paid for the lie detector. Because the guy was making money off of uh, uh, the Comic Con, so the guy, the guy that was pretending to be the guy, was making money. So sure, sure, you know, it, money off Comic Con. Yeah, saying, yeah, so it warrants a little bit of an investigation on who actually was the guy in the helmet. So he had a great, great, cool short video, and was like he came on our show, I was like, "Whoa, dude, that's amazing!" <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, that was cool. I was like, and you came on, like, oh no, no way, dude. Would you? Oh yeah. Of course, we we determined what happened now, how you got here, which is, we're sorry about that, man. You know, now that you're here, don't worry about the deliveries anymore. <laughs> don't worry about that. All right. Well, I, I think I am gonna have to head out pretty soon, but uh, I'm yeah, honored yeah, we're not done. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> we we've milked your cow as much as we can. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you uh, right before you leave? What do you got uh, coming up that you might want to say, or another video drop for people want to check you out? You know, going forward. Uh, you can get, like I said, the book one and book two at the website uh, at the shop. You have to pay with PayPal right now because I'm working on the uh, WordPress issues. And then you can follow me on all the social media stuff. Just type my name in, and then the TV show. You can watch that at Gaia TV. Uh, and uh, yeah, just more of the same. Just more lectures on philosophy, geopolitics, movies, all that. Uh, and then I still off and on host the fourth hour of the Halix Hones show. Wow. And that's man. a uh, website. Now, anybody's interested about that Sword Trooper, that's that guy, Jamie Strangroom. He's one that did that documentary. And this is Jay Rhodes. J, J. Rhodes, sorry. Jay Dyers of YouTube page. Check him out. He's an awesome guest, awesome person. Yeah, man. And seriously, man. Seriously, uh, Thank you for coming on. That Make show is that you're just not about. You're just not about. I only go on shows that have fifty to fifty thousand more subs or this. You know, you came no. on the show and it means a lot to us. No, I'm not. Yeah. That's, I don't think it's uh, it's not appropriate to be snobby. Uh, you know, in the e e celeb realm. <laughs> I'm just <Yeah>. joking. <laughs> no, and you have a great sense of humor, dude. I get nervous, man. I you know I. You just you roll him back. Well, thank God, man, he fucking rolls back. I can make a joke. I don't feel bad because you dish it back, and it's funny. I, I make jokes, and sometimes people just they look confused. A lot of people like, can't I, take it. Like they, they get upset and they can't take it. You never know what people can and can't take, and when they're going to get yeah. mad. Oh. You, you like, guys oh, are uh, uh, laid back. I like that. That's a lot of fun. And, and cool. We only do the show for two hours, so basically, you're not really leaving early. It's only no, you're done. Like we, you know, we I know it's a little bit late, but uh, I got a wedding that I'm doing this week, and then the website's messing up. So I'm not trying to be rude to you guys. It's just no, you're it's a crazy week. Yeah. So. No, yeah, we usually kick you guys out about now. We hit like a switch, and then a, a breaks free, and you just hit the you, hit, you fall into the water with the sharks with the lasers. Well, I, uh, let's. Uh, I'll come back in the future if you want to. How's that? Yeah, oh, we love to have you back. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Pick a cool subject, man. We'll rip it apart. We'll just do a. Well, we'll do a big roast. <laughs> I want to hear a roast out of you. Yeah, we'll do a real roast for you. If you really want to do another top 10 roast, we'll give yeah. you a proper one. Okay, we'll do that. One. Yeah, so awesome. we'll set that up on the side. So, guys, this is Jay Dyer. Uh, please check his channel out. I guarantee you'll love it. He just doesn't talk movies, guys. He talks everything. Everything. I mean, he monetize just like I did for, you know, speaking the truth. So check a lot him of boring out. shit, too. So uh, come check out all my boring shit on my, my channel. Yeah, check so his books out, guys. Check his books out. Kid is because right. I, Astor, I want to buy the Astor, uh Hollywood because that's my thing too, and I want to look it through and see what you got, yeah. man. For I, it's solid stuff. So yeah, I'm you'll like it. You'll like it. Yeah, and yeah. Check out his books, and uh, tomorrow we're going to be talking a whole hour about Games of Thrones. So if you're if you like Games of Thrones, check us out yeah. tomorrow. And then uh, Friday, I got another guest coming on. I won't I won't tell who that guy is coming on until tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be talking paranormal on Friday. Uh, we're going to be talking about a real life exorcism. So that's going to be fun and cool. So beyond that, Jay, thank you very much for coming on. You're a fantastic Thanks, guys. Y'all have a good night. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. Later. Take it easy.